Hello, my name is Patricia Marinci, and this is Mental Health Mondays, our ongoing Q&A series in which we answer anonymous questions submitted by our campus community on various mental health topics. If you are interested in submitting a question to be featured in one of our episodes, feel free to click the link to our survey below, and you can also get access to that survey by following us on Instagram at U of A Caps. Let's get started. On today's episode, we're gonna be exploring the topic of what to expect in therapy and answering specific questions such as, is it wrong to seek actual answers from a therapist? Meaning if I were to ask for step-by-step -step solutions in therapy, is that something I can receive? Or is therapy more of someone guiding you to seeking your own answers as opposed to problem solving? These are all really good questions. And the short answer and probably the theme of this video is, it depends. And I can understand that that is probably something you're not expecting or wanting to hear for these types of questions and for similar questions, such as, will I enjoy therapy? Uh, it depends. Will I feel automatically better? It, it depends. Mm. La therapy, peut-il résoudre tous mes problèmes? C'est possible. Oh, hmm. Mais, et, ah, c'est incroyable. See, it's, it's complicated. And so let's take a deeper look at it. For this video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on our brief treatment model because that's the model we follow at CAPS. But this information can definitely apply to circumstances within longer treatment. So similar to our earlier discussion on myths in therapy, there sometimes is this misconception that the therapist will have the golden answer or solution to solve all your problems. And unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. But it does make sense that people are seeking therapy for those types of answers. I mean, it's understandable, right? You want to go to someone that can listen to your problems and offer you a quick solution. Um, but the reality is, it's going to take a little bit more than that and a couple additional factors and information to get at the root of the problem. And so there are a couple of factors to consider when attending therapy and getting the most out of it. So one of them is commitment, and that can mean two things. So commitment in terms of actually attending the sessions and making sure you're attending them as often as possible. Obviously, if things come up, you need to change your schedule, that's perfectly fine. But if you wanna get the most out of treatment, making sure to attend as much as you can in the agreed upon circumstances that you will got with your therapist. And then commitment also means putting in the effort and practice. And so if you're talking about things with your therapist, you also wanna make sure that you are motivated and coming in with an open mind to process and talk about things to work out your problems. And so this is where things get a little bit complicated. Obviously, every therapist is really different. And so treatment is going to look a little different. We all tend to draw upon similar theories, but there's many different theories that people can apply. So I'm going to be talking as best as I can in a general sense of what to expect, but I'm also going to draw upon my own personal style. So people come to therapy for a lot of different things. And oftentimes they come with a specific issue. And sometimes they come with a, they come with these just upsetting feelings and just having a space for them to air it out is enough in itself. So there can be, be a situation where you are actually problem solving or you're able to gain some sort of awareness 
to the problems that you're facing. Once again, I know it's very vague, but I'm gonna try my best to explain. So I mentioned theories. There are many different theories that explain human emotion behaviors, and us as clinicians, you draw upon those theories and research on evidence-based practice to help people with those issues. So a lot of these theories are what we call client-centered. So it's based on the experiences of the client. And sometimes you hear in therapy circles this phrase of, you know, the client is the expert of their story. And there is truth to that. And so when we talk about a therapist having a golden answer to a person's issues, the reason that it is difficult to do that is, first of all, the client is the one with all the information. And what works for one person may not necessarily work for another person. So that's why there's not one set answer. And this is where commitment comes through and motivation comes through. We as therapists and clinicians, we're not mind readers in the sense that if there is a particular issue that's going on in your life, or you can pinpoint what you think may be the possible cause of that, we won't know that unless you tell us. And so that is why the more you share or willing to share, as much as you are comfortable, obviously we're not expecting you to give your whole life story from the very beginning up until now. But if you have some sort of particular issue in the back of your mind that you know in a deep, you know, you know, you pretty much know that that's the reason why you're having issues, it's important to be up forward with that information because then we could take that. So client-centered. Client-centered also means, yes, there is some sort of guidance. The therapist is here for you to list all the information, all the issues you're going through. And then there's goal planning. And goal planning is definitely client-centered because you as a client want to make sure that you're having as much input as to what areas of your life you want to see change or gain aware awareness for. And so you can see it's more of a collaboration. And yes, depending on what specific issues you have, there may be specific skills like problem solving that can be helpful. And those are the things I think of in terms of things to cope with maybe sleeping issues or anxiety issues. There are specific techniques and strategies that you can use to help that. And so that's where problem solving definitely can be useful because there are techniques that we know in terms of evidence-based practice that does help people. Other times, it may not be as clear cut as that. It may be just giving someone a space to just release everything that they're thinking about because they don't have the opportunity to do so. And just being able to have a space to talk about your problems can be relieving in itself, a lot of clients have told me. And it's true, if you verbalize what's happening, you take it out of your mind and you verbalize in the room, you can also be able to put the pieces together and create a timeline like, oh, this is what happened. And then as a result, this is what happens. And now I'm able to gain more of an awareness of things and being able to accept what you can and cannot control in that situation. And in social work circles, that is where I've been trained. There is another similar theory that is called the strengths perspective. And so it definitely relates and goes hand by hand with client-centered therapy because it's basically helping people identify their strengths and using their strengths to help them cope with their issues and problems. And that's empowering to some people. Just the idea of being able to identify the things that they're good at can be therapeutic or relieving in itself. And I actually love asking that question in the beginning when I see the person for the first time, what are your strengths? And I would say most times people are like, I'm not good at anything. But I actually kind of push people to give me an answer because everybody's good at something or everyone is proud of doing something. They think they do something well, they're really good at it, you know? And so being able to walk a person through that can definitely instill some hope 
that, hey, here are your skill set. This is things that you're good at. These are your strengths. These are your awesome qualities. Let's use that to help you build your resilience and your ability to cope. So that in a nutshell is kind of what to expect in terms of therapy, but also coming into therapy, some of the things that you can additionally expect to do is talk about your problems, which obviously can be difficult for a lot of people. These aren't necessarily good feelings to talk to and, and, and to walk through but it is something that is important for you to express in order to start the healing process. So going back to, will I be happy? Will I enjoy therapy? It's not as simple as that. It's more about being open to talk about the stuff that you don't feel comfortable talking about, but you know has a connection to how you're feeling or the issues you're going through. And in doing that, starting the healing process. So that isn't going to be necessarily an easy process, but hopefully the end result would put you in a bit of a better place or the ability gives you the ability and tools to help you cope. So if you found this information to be helpful, I would like for you to do a couple things. First, I would like for you to like this video. And then I would love for you to subscribe to our channel. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified for each new episode of our series. This has been Mental Health Mondays. Until next time.